I love dogs. They're cute. They do that funny waggy tail thing where they basically vibrate when you talk to them, and they go great on a pile. So when I see a good dog pile that every content creator in Ishgardian history has jumped on at some point, I can't help but give it a go. Final Fantasy XIV's gearing system is one that hasn't really changed in any major way for many, many years. It has its positives, it's easy enough to comprehend, that even the most casual player can understand what they must do with just a couple of sentences. It's consistent, you always know what you're going to expect. Sturdy, like an ancient tree, or a dilapidated building that the local government can't get rid of no matter how hard they try because for some reason it's got protected status. But for a long time now, I've wanted some changes. So today, we're going to discuss which small, manageable changes I'd make to the gearing system of FF14's endgame if I had carte blanche, and by the end of the video, we should have painted the 10,000 hours in MS Paint picture of a more robust gearing pipeline throughout the expansion's patch cycle. So that I don't go too crazy into the territory of unrealistic dreams, here are a few ground rules. I can't add entirely new types of gear or types of content. I have to work within the constraints of what already does exist or has existed. Same with stats. I can't just remove direct hit and add googly eyes percentage to the weapon for extra variety. Substats are something that I think is worth discussing in depth, but today is not the time or place. I have to bear in mind both Square Enix's and the customer's point of views, so I can't just say no cap, stay one gear, you're done, because Square Enix would not like that. If I break one of these rules, the Catgirl Mafia is going to hunt me down and leave me sleeping with the Blobfishes. I think we can break down some of the obvious major issues quickly. It takes too long to gear alt jobs, upgrade items are a major funnel, you get relics too late, and there are not enough sets that are usable. First, let's talk about weekly capped tombstones. Currently, the cap is 450, and it's been there since the Middle Ages of patch 2.1. Since 2.1, we've seen 10 jobs and an entirely new gear set and scouting added to the game, and yet that tombstone cap has stood still, locked in time. It feels obvious to me that the tome cap is a pain point in the gearing process nowadays, especially when it comes to alt jobs. Often if you clear and farm the Savage tier on a weekly basis, and aim to gear every roll to max, you're done with Savage months before you're done with tombstones. The immediate answer is just to increase the tombstone cap to 900 or something like that. And while I totally agree with the people that believe that's the solution, I understand why Square Enix may not want that. With 900 tomes, you could gear up a single roll in such a short space of time that the argument could be made that it's too fast. I actually think the current structure of it taking on average 4-6 to six weeks to finish your tome gear on your main is pretty healthy. The issue comes in with alts. My solution is roll caps. Or at least one of them is. I got a few more options to throw at you too. As in, you cap your 450 tomes a week, and then you go to Solution 9 Cyberpunk NPC to buy yourself a nice new Helia ring. Once you've done that, it's gone. Shame. But luckily, now you can swap jobs to Bard, and you can spend that cap again on a piece for range DPS. Essentially, by capping your tomes, you are able to spend it on multiple rolls and work towards best in slot for those multiple rolls at the same time. While I'd love you to be able to spend your cap on every roll, every week. Maybe a more realistic place would be to allow you to spend your tome cap twice a week on different rolls. It prevents you from gearing your main faster than you currently do, but it allows you to in essence double your overall gearing speed across a patch. An additional option is to make it so that whichever roll you're playing, you receive tomes on. So if you want to grind, you technically can cap tombstones on every single roll every single week. Or you can do one, two, even three, whatever takes your fancy. There are a lot of different options with small changes between them, based on where you'd consider the line of balancing to be. This video is sponsored by Sakurako and Tokyo Treat. Tokyo Treats is a monthly Japanese pop snack subscription box, including a delicious selection of up to 20 seasonal, exclusive, and limited edition Japanese snacks, and a packet of ramen. Sakurako subscriptions come with the same volume of goods, but instead with traditional, authentic and artisan snacks sourced from local Japanese makers, including a lovely, uniquely patterned tableware each month. Spring has arrived in Japan and with it comes the much anticipated cherry blossom viewing season known as Hanami. This month's boxes feature a beautifully designed Sakura themed box filled with a bunch of Sakura inspired snacks and drinks. I had these crunchy Matsunaga Sakura biscuits and they were so good that I 
hours fiending for more. So if you want to enjoy a little taste of Japan from the comfort of your own home, I'd love it if you tried out Tokyo Tree and Sakura Co using my exclusive discount code for $5 off your first box. There's a link in the description if you want to try it out. Once again, thank you so much for sponsoring this video and making it possible for me to keep making this content. Secondly, you should be able to purchase both left and right side upgrade pieces directly from Tombstone should you wish to. Let's make it cost 450, so one full Tombstone cap. The reason behind this is because I believe that not only should Tombstone gear be upgradable to best in slot eye level, but Alliance gear should too. Right now Alliance is in a weird spot because honestly it's kind of pointless. The gear is barely passable for alt jobs if you don't do savage, but otherwise they're just glorified glamour, allowing you to cap and spend your tombstones on two rolls, then do your weekly alliance, and all those pieces can reach max eye level via upgrades is certainly a boost to your gearing options. The Criterion dungeons were added in Endwalker, providing a fun, challenging 4 player endgame option, and while initially they gave you almost nothing of value, over time they've received more and more until they are, in my opinion, close to being in a healthy spot. The first thing I do is remove those weird arbitrary requirements for Criterion Savage weapons. If you clear Savage on a weekly basis, you should get a token that you can immediately trade for a glowy best in slot eye level version of a tombstone weapon. None of this you can upgrade a tombstone weapon you already have and also you need the upgrade weapon by the way, shenanigans, you just get the weapon. From Criterion Normal, you should get a token that can be traded for an upgrade item, left side, right side, or even tome weapon of choice. Savage gives you the weekly drop from normal as well, because of course it should. You can see that I've put a lot of emphasis on allowing more usage of upgrade items, but additionally on expanding how you get them and how regularly you can acquire them. Right now, upgrade items, in my opinion, are the biggest filter when it comes to reaching best in slot in an acceptable time frame. Lessening that blow, whilst also increasing their versatility and your gearing choices, is something I'm majorly in favour of. Next, let's look at Savage. Firstly, why on earth does it still take 8 weeks to purchase a weapon after the improvements they made in Anabasios? It should take 6 at most, change it lad. Secondly, higher books should be freely usable to trade down to lower ones at a 1 to 1 exchange rate. So if I want 4 book ones from 1 week of clears, I can just have that with just a few clicks. I actually think Square Enix have done a good job of satiating a lot of the grievances that players had with gear speed and RNG protection in Savage specifically with the most recent changes. They keep door bosses for the final turn though, I really think that they should have them drop both a left and right side upgrade in a chest on a weekly basis, so there's more than one of each across the entire tier for people to roll on. But there's one big thing that I would change about Savage, I'd have it unlock on the release of the off patch, completely. If you want to farm every single Savage weapon on the day 7.3 releases, go ahead, knock yourself out. The Criterion too. There are two reasons for this. Firstly, the extremely late Savage unlock leads it into this weird situation that by the time the unlock comes, everybody is so burnt out of it or finished with it that there's little to no surge in activity, and it just isn't fit for purpose. Secondly is that the FF14 gearing cycle has a piece of pinnacle content that you are supposed to be gearing towards. Ultimate. Once or twice, or in the world of dreams and golden Bahamut mounts three times per expansion, and ultimate releases just after the odd patch. This is the end goal of the gearing cycle. It's the material reason to aim for best in slot. And as things stand right now, it's incredibly difficult to be able to enter it on more than one or two rolls near release because of the gating. Odd patches for those that don't raid are also often touted as catch-up patches. So using these patches as an opportunity to massively accelerate the gearing process positively affects both raiders and non-raiders. Raiders can gear alts to enter ultima on, non-raiders can get their bis in a comfortable manner. The relic is something else we need to talk about. Firstly, the relic release is way too late in my opinion. I think we should get a preliminary relic step before 7.1, somewhere between Savage and the point one patch, and there should be updates on every point five patch from then onwards. On even patches, their item level should be extreme trial equivalent, and on odd patches, they should upgrade to Savage equivalent, making them the indisputable best in slot thanks to their additional substats. On top of this, bring back those relic armors. I love that shit. Give them the exact same eye levels as the weapons, please. Make them useful beyond solely in field instances. Because relics become the best option so late in a patch cycle, none of this really harms anything in terms of gearing economy. So all this is in service of a few things. 
Firstly, it should keep taking roughly as long as it currently does to reach best in slot on your first job, providing you clear Savage and Cap Tomes weekly. The only exception is that in my opinion, you receive upgrade items too slowly and that should speed up. Secondly, you should be able to gear alt jobs much faster and the roll cap alongside additional gear outlets in Criterion, Alliance and Relic gear are in service of that. Thirdly, there should be more sets available in each gearing cycle that can reach best in slot item levels. In this case, there will be four for each. For weapons, you get Savage, Criterion, Ultimate and Relic. For gear, you get Savage, Tombstone, Alliance and Relic. There are options for Raiders, for Light Party Enjoyers, for Grinders, and you can mix and match as you wish to account for different skill and spell speeds. I know I've jumped around a lot, so let's put this visually on a timeline so it all makes a bit more sense. The expansion launches, and just like usual, there's a two week period at the start where things are exciting and different. Uncapped Tombstone gear is your first aim, and you get the best available weapons and accessories from the two EX trials to complement them. Two weeks later, normal mode and crafted gear release, and you'll use a combination of the two. Then two weeks after that, Savage drops alongside capped tombstones. You can spend your tombstones after you cap with one version of the roll cap implementation I mentioned. You can start clearing Savage and doing your weeklies. Eight weeks after Savage releases, Criterion comes out, offering an additional option to obtain a best in slot weapon weekly from Savage and an extra additional guaranteed upgrade item of choice from normal. Around the same time, the Relic update releases. This one is equivalent to the extreme weapon in item level, but because of the bonus substats, it'll be a bit stronger. The armor is also accessible now and sits somewhere between crafted and base tombstone gear. The odd patch releases a month or two after that, and with that comes the Alliance Raid, dropping a tombstone equivalent drop weekly, which can then be upgraded. You can now obtain upgrade items from the Alliance Raid weekly and from hunts too. Savage unlocks, as does Criterion, providing you the opportunity to obtain max eye level without weekly constraints, should you want to. Ultimate releases two weeks later, and with it comes a new, most powerful weapon thanks to the third materia slot. Ultimates are generally coveted for the cosmetics and the title, so this weapon only being strongest for a limited amount of time is not really an issue. And that's good, because a month or two afterwards, on the 0.15 patch, the major relic update releases, allowing it to upgrade to best in slot levels in both the weapon and gear departments. At this point in the patch cycle, the relic gear becomes overall the strongest option above all else, and for the month or two before the gear loop reaches the start again with point two, and then you do it all over again. What do you think of this? What would you add, change, or remove about my suggestions? Do you like them, or am I getting banished to the graveyard? Let me know in the comments, because I would love to hear your thoughts on the matter and what simple fixes you would make to improve the gearing experience. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you next week with another video. Have a fantastic day.